The Genesis Communications Network is sponsored by the U.S. Money Reserve, your exclusive source for gold and silver precious metals. Visit them online at usmoneyreserve.com. The stocks discussed on Wall Street Raw are not in any way a recommendation or solicitation to buy, sell, or hold. If considering on acting on information, we first recommend you seek out a competent, licensed professional for advice. What kingdom has sent you? The kingdom of the Most High. Nothing you have ever experienced can prepare you for the unbridled carnage you're about to witness. The Super Bowl, the World Series, they don't know what pressure is. In this building, it's either kill or be killed. They make no friends in the pits and you take no prisoners. One minute, you're up half a million in soybeans and the next, boom. Your kids don't go to college and they've repossessed your Bentley. Are you with me? Genesis Communication Network is proud to bring you Wall Street Raw with nationally recognized market timer and previous Wall Street Week elf, Mark Leibovic, welcoming you on board his financial time machine. And here is the elf himself, Mark Leibovic. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's Mark Leibovitz, and welcome to uh, Wall Street Raw on this Saturday morning, May 7th. You have a lot of other choices on a Saturday morning, and we're grateful you found time to tune in to uh, Wall Street Raw. If you miss um, the show, we do have it archived here at GCNlive.com. It is also available on iTunes. For more information on me and my uh, newsletters, you can go to Wall Street Raw. Dot com or VR Trader, VRTrader.com for more information on Wall Street Raw and our newsletters and services. Many of you may recognize me from years and years ago as a elf on the old uh, Louis Rukeyser Wall Street Week television program, or perhaps you had heard me with uh, Paul Kangas on PBS's Nightly Business Report, uh, former floor trader on the CBOE and newsletter writer, and we try to bring you some of the... Uh, off stories here that we really don't get reported in the financial press. What I want to start off the show with is to say to you that let's make uh, Wall Street great again. As you know, I'm a Trump supporter, have been. Um, our clients at VRTrader.com have benefited from, uh, believe it or not, the move in cement stocks here in the last uh, several weeks and months, particularly uh, with the talk about building the wall, and uh, very excited about that. So, again, perhaps uh, we can see a, ch- a needed change here in uh, Washington and on Wall Street, and uh, Donald Trump, I think, could help provide that. So let's make uh, Wall Street great again. One of the ways we do this is to recognize how the financial press has been um, misreporting. Um, I've talked about this on and on in my uh, newsletters. The financial press is uh, not paying attention to the phony numbers that are being reported by uh, Wall Street. Uh, I've also written how the state of American journalism is virtually on the verge of collapse. Uh, Ideology has permeated hard news coverage. Honest reporting is becoming almost scarce, both in the financial and in political circles. And in the case of uh, our great president, uh, Barack Hussein Obama, alone, the press has murdered the truth and murdered our national security by not standing up against him in terms of questioning uh, actions. And uh, we're losing the uh, rule of law by the press not acting. And uh, what is it? Are they just afraid of repercussions? Uh, They're afraid of losing their jobs. The role of the financial press and of the press in general is uh, that of the fourth estate, you know, to question government, to question financial numbers. And we don't see that happening, or very little. And that's the reason why we have uh, Barama in the current administration on a love affair here for the last several years. And uh, believe me, if it was a Republican administration, we wouldn't see uh, this type of inaction. Um, we're going to be talking to Sinclair No this morning, and we'll be talking about some of the um, misuse of numbers, the non-GAAP measures uh, on Sections 2 and 3 here today, in particular how companies, for example, sticking to the financial side for a second, uh, uh, low-ball earnings estimates ahead of reports. 
as an excuse for driving stock prices higher. We also know uh, the financial engineering that has been going on in recent years where companies are buying back their shares, which in effect distort the earnings of the uh, companies, making them higher than they really are because less shares are out there, so stocks are jacked higher uh, because of that. And we see uh, you know, just a lot of financial engineering is a game that really has to stop. And uh, the stock market has rallied here pretty much, in my opinion, mostly on air in the last uh, three, four years. Is that where we're at? We had a nice little technical rally like we saw here. Believe it or not, the rally ended on April 20th. I don't know if you're familiar with 420, but 420 is the big marijuana cannabis day around the world that the cannabis uh, celebrants talk about. So that was the day that the stock market hit a high and perhaps got high itself on that day as both the S&P and Dow have topped out. And most of you know that I am on a uh, on a bear uh, signal. In fact, I think we've entered a recession, and uh, I think there's more significant downside ahead for this market. Maybe we're just following the pattern that we saw back in uh, the August low of 2015 or perhaps the mid-February low, and then we come right back up again, which we've done, and we're going to go back and forth here, 2,000 points either way. But ultimately, I think that the numbers are going to justify a much lower market. So got to be careful out there. A lot of opportunities, however. We did see strength in the gold market here in recent weeks. I think the cycles, as I mentioned in previous broadcasts for the last several months, have turned. I think we're beginning a multi-month move to the upside. One of the things I do want to cover here a little bit, um, you know, found uh, an interesting piece, um, you know, regarding where we are in terms of um, – the borders, language, and culture in this country. And, you know, one of my heroes is Michael Savage, who's talked about and written about that. But I did a little bit of research, and I found out that uh, former President uh, Teddy Roosevelt uh, had a lot to do with this type of uh, thinking. So uh, basically, uh, I want to read you a little piece here that I picked up on the Internet. I think uh, Lou Dobbs had quoted this or found this, uh, and I'm repeating this accordingly. But this is from Teddy uh, Roosevelt. Uh, and this was a letter that that he wrote as an American defense to the American Defense Society in 1919, and he quote a quote is in the first place we should insist that if that if an immigrant who comes here in good faith becomes an American and assimilates himself to us, he shall be treated on an exact equality with everyone else, for it is an outrage to discriminate against any such man because of his creed or birthplace or origin, but this is predicated upon the man becoming in very fact an American and nothing but an American. There can be no divided allegiance here. Any man who says he is an American but something else also isn't an American at all. We have room but for one flag the American flag, and this excludes the red flag, which symbolizes all wars against liberty and civilization, just as much as it excludes any foreign flag of any nation to which we are hostile. We have room but for one language here, and that is the English language, and we have room for one sole loyalty, and that is to the loyalty of the American people. This was Teddy Roosevelt in 1919. So borders, language, culture, folks. And we know that this is the truth. This is what Donald Trump is talking about. Yes, we can make America great and Wall Street great again, but uh, we have to recognize these basic principles. And uh, we also have to stand up, as I am doing as a member of the financial press, you know, questioning things that are mis mishandled, whether it's a uh, Barack Obama event or whether it's a uh, financial statement. We have to stand for the right of the press to question and to challenge, and that's what our job is here, and this is what I do here on Wall Street Raw. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we always have uh, great guests on the show. My good friend Sinclair will be with us here in a few minutes. Uh, we're going to go over the gap earnings and a lot of other interesting bankster stories from the pe previous week. Uh, as you know, uh, Sinclair authors the ethabankers.com column, and uh, I have a good friend, Don Velo, joining us on the show this week from equityclock.com. I follow a lot of his work. A lot of my work is cyclical related, despite our belief that everything is in the numbers. Uh, a lot of it is by extraneous forces, things that repeat seasonally in the markets every year. Uh, I joke about it in my newsletter every week how we have a turnaround Tuesday. Markets turn around generally on that date. You've got the Santa Claus rally. You've got uh, sell may go away, which is now in effect, in my opinion, uh, which uh, keeps the market in a uh, defensive posture until the fall. So a lot of things that we can talk about with Don Velo on segment four. Stay tuned. We'll be back to, with you in just a moment. Thanks for joining us. 
You're listening to Wall Street Raw with Mark Leibovitz. Go to WallStreetRawRadio.com for information on Mark's newsletters and products. Stay tuned. Mark will be right back. mobile devices right against our bodies every day. But growing scientific evidence has emerged showing serious health risks associated with exposure to EMF radiation emitted from these devices. The solution is Defender Shield, the most effective mobile radiation shielding ever developed. Defender Shield blocks virtually 100% of EMF radiation from cell phones, tablets, and laptops and starts at just $64.99. Buy now at DefenderShield.com. For 10% off, use promo code GCN. DefenderShield.com, the worldwide leader in mobile radiation shielding. My computer is so slow, it's making me crazy. I used to have that problem. Did you quit using the computer, or did you buy a new one? No, I called Geeks on Site. They made an appointment to visit my home and showed up the same day. You mean they didn't ask you to bring your computer to a shop? That's what happened when I called a support company. Geeks on Site can go to your home or business or even repair your computer online. They have 24-7 emergency service. If you are having problems with your PC or Mac, call Geeks on Site. 1-800-591-1682. Our friendly certified computer Repair experts are available 24-7. Call now for a free diagnosis. 1-800-591-1682. Data recovery, virus removal, and maintenance for all laptops, desktops, printers, and networks. That's Geeks on Site for friendly, certified computer repair experts. Available 24-7 over the phone or in your home or business. Just call 1-800-591-1682. That's 1-800-591-1682. 1-800-591-1682. So you've got to take a state construction license exam or certification. Can't decide on what books or what chapters to study? Discover right now how you can eliminate unnecessary books and wasted study time. At ContractorExam.com, our study materials zero in on state-required test topics in an effective, multiple-choice format. So whether you're a plumber, electrician, general contractor, or other construction-related trade, ContractorExam.com will help get you prepared. Visit us at www.ContractorExam.com today. Water is the single most important thing your body needs, so you want to be sure it's the best for you and your family. Since 2005, thousands have depended on Berkey Purified Water. The Berkey Guy provides the lowest priced filtration systems in every size. For incredibly delicious water now and in an emergency, get to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com. All right, listen up, because this is the most important thing you're going to hear all day. What if I said you could make money flipping houses without any cash, credit, or manual labor? And what if I said you could do it part-time from the comfort of your home? Sound un believable? Hi, I'm Preston Neely, and I'm going to prove it by sending you a free copy of my smash hit selling book, How to Get Rich in Real Estate. It sells online for $19.95, but I'm giving away free copies this week. To get one before they're gone, call 1-800-959-9582. I used to be so broke. I had my electricity shut off nine times, but I figured out a simple way to make money flipping houses without even breaking a sweat. Now I'm living the good life, and so should you. Listen, if you're sick and tired of stressing about money, this book could change your life. Hands down, it's the fastest, easiest way to get started in real estate. Let me prove it. Call right now to find out how to get your free book. When they're gone, they're gone. Call 1-800-959-9582. 1-800-959-9582. Paid monitor attorney spokesperson, Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with Principal Office in Houston, Texas. Is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. Think positive. Never show any sign of weakness. Always go for the throat. Buy low, sell high. Fear, that's the other guy's problem. Welcome back to the Wall Street Raw Radio Show with Mark Leibovitz, your time machine for the financial markets. Want to know more? Go to WallStreetRawRadio.com. 
Now, here's the elf himself, Mark Leibovitz. Welcome back, my good friend and uh, financial commentator Sinclair No on Wall Street Raw this morning. Sinclair is the financial commentator at 1510 KFNN Phoenix and author of the blog EatTheBankers.com. Well, we've got some bankers to eat uh, this week, Sinclair, but uh, before we get into that, we've got uh, the Federal Reserve Bank uh, President Dennis Lockhart talking and uh, San Francisco President John Williams talking, so the old jawboning is coming out again, and here they're sort of beating the drum that maybe rates will go up in the uh, June meeting, so uh, we'll see if uh, that happens and if, or if the market nosedives before then and they change their tune, which is often the case. Well, and Lockhart and Williams both came out with their opinions earlier in the week, and of course we got the jobs report on Friday, which was a pretty disappointing jobs report, quite frankly. Um, 160,000 jobs, that was more than 40,000 below expectations. Uh, it wasn't a terrible report, but well below expectations. And now I think a lot of traders are saying, oh, the Fed's not going to raise rates in June. The Fed may be looking at it a little bit differently. Wages were up a little bit, so they may be looking at that and saying hey, wages are starting to become inflationary. That's a possibility. But generally speaking, I think the markets were looking at it and saying, nah, Fed's not going to raise rates. That could be setting up a big disconnect, though, a disconnect between what the market is thinking and what the Fed is thinking. And the Fed could end up surprising us. Who knows? Well, we know we have their buddies, the banks, looking for higher rates because that's where they make more money. So I think there is that political pressure there. We've talked about that before. So we'll see how it all plays out. But, as you know, I'm also looking for the market to remain weak here based on some of our cyclical work. And I'm just wondering if that ties in with the interest rate hike. Well, it might. I mean, we see an interest rate hike in June. I think that would push the markets quite a bit lower for the summer. And we saw that happen in December. Indeed. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a rate hike even with a fairly weak number. Now, keep in mind, we could pretty much maintain the current level even if the earning, even if uh, jobs were coming in at, say, a rate of 100000 a month because the, the, the labor market has improved to that point. So just to maintain and sustain 100000 a month, so right now, 160000 a month means that the labor market is taking up some of the slack. We're not at full employment yet, but we are taking up some of that slack. The Federal Reserve also um, reported this week that the credit quality has deteriorated in the first quarter in loans to businesses and consumers in the energy area, which you talked about this before. This is important because there might be some more bankruptcies. There already were a couple this past week or two. Oh, yeah, we had... Uh... I think it was Ultra and Mid-States announcing a bankruptcy. It looks like Sandridge is another one that's going to come along. And all of a sudden we're looking at a situation where we're seeing more and more of these uh, problems, a lot of it related to the energy sector. But, you know, you look over as well, and we're also seeing fewer and fewer um, mergers and acquisitions taking place. Uh, I can't remember the last time we saw an IPO in this market. To some extent, the market is doing the work for the Fed right now. It's cooling things down a little bit. Um, But, uh, yeah, I continue to think that the uh, energy sector in particular is going to be a big problem when it comes to um, particularly junk credit, uh, high-yield uh, high yield debt. In fact, we saw some of the biggest outflows that we've seen recently from one of the biggest uh, high yield ETFs out there. Um, just billions of dollars flowing out in a very short period of time. And uh, I, I think people are starting to get a little bit nervous about this. Well, the bankers are at it again. We have some rigging going on here. I read that seven of the world's biggest banks have agreed to pay $324 million to settle a private U.S. lawsuit accusing them of rigging the ISDA fix, an interest rate of benchmarks used in the uh, derivatives market. <laughs> Fill us in on that a little bit, Sinclair. That's yeah, interesting. It, it, well, this is just another one of those uh, situations. ISDA uh, covers derivatives and swaps. 
And uh, like many other marketplaces like this, like the LIBOR, like the, the metals markets, they would set rates uh, on a daily basis. That's the fix part of it. Um, and the bankers that are involved would be the ones who actually set the rates. And uh, no surprise, because we've seen it elsewhere. We've seen it in Forex. We've seen it in LIBOR. We've seen it in metals. Uh, they would manipulate that fix or that daily pricing of interest rates tied to swaps and derivatives. Now, this is an enormous marketplace, just absolutely huge. And, uh, I mean, we're talking hundreds of trillions of dollars here uh, that are affected by this interest rate that's set on a daily basis. And so they were manipulating it. I, we shouldn't be surprised at all by this point. What I found surprising was that it was such a small fine, three hundred, just over three hundred million dollars. That's ridiculous for for a market that size. I, I, well, I shouldn't be surprised. It's it's been the the way it's been going. Uh, well, the, the amount of money doesn't make a difference to them anyway. Whether it's small or large, they continue to rig. So they continue to rig, and then it'll come out of shareholders. And you know, it's not as if uh, anybody's going to go to jail for this. In fact, I haven't even seen anything that uh, says that this would apply to deferred prosecution agreements. So it's, it's as if it's just a little slap on the wrist. Well, we have a lot to talk about, and uh, we're running out of time in this segment, but the uh, gap earnings story, uh, I want to touch on you if you have time uh, to stay with us here for a few more minutes, Sinclair. So, sure, love to. Right. So a uh, big part of the uh, rigging and the financial engineering story that's been going on on Wall Street for years, so I want to cover that in some detail. So we're talking to Sinclair No, editor-publisher of EatTheBankers.com, and the financial commentator, the financial commentator, KFNN 1510 Phoenix, and we'll be back with Sinclair in just a moment to talk about more about the our friendly bankers. And before we do, uh, as I keep uh, pounding the table regarding the employment reports that keep coming out on Friday, we had the street holding their breath regarding the employment numbers. But, you know, despite positive reports coming out of Washington, still I believe most people don't think this feels like a robust uh, labor market. And according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor, workers are considered employed even if they are working a couple of part-time jobs to scrape by, even if uh, they work just a couple of hours a week. Many of the jobs created in the recovery are low-paying or part-time jobs and are part of the 1099 economy, as they call it, temporary jobs, freelance or contracted jobs. In other words, jobs without benefits. The number of Americans working in this capacity grew from 10% to about almost 16%. So not getting the truth out there, folks, and uh, that's what our job here is to tell you about it. Stay tuned. We'll be back to you in, right in one minute. Go to WallStreetRawRadio.com for more information on Mark's newsletters and products. Stay tuned. Mark will be right back. High-performance investors and traders use superior financial tools to achieve superior returns. You have that tool with Mark Leibovitz, nationally renowned top market timer, legendary television Wall Street Week elf, and nightly business report market monitor, who shares with you his unique market tools and commentary at WallStreetRaw.com. At WallStreetRaw.com, Mark provides you with his latest ideas on how to help build and protect your wealth, help you avoid the next big market crash, and also stay healthy to enjoy your wealth. Mark has a special free gift for listeners of the Wall Street Raw radio show. Go to WallStreetRaw.com and sign up for his free weekly Vice News Raw report. While there, go ahead and sign up for his free Gold News Raw report. You will receive both weekly, and both are totally free. No credit card information is required. Sign up today for your free Vice News Raw and Gold News Raw reports at WallStreetRaw.com. That's WallStreetRaw.com. 
This is it. For the first time ever on this station, U.S. government gold offered at cost for only $139 each. With Wall Street suffering its worst start to a trading year in history, now is especially the time to be paying attention to gold. This first time ever, U.S. legal tender government gold offered at cost for only $139 each is from the U.S. Money Reserve. Call them at 1-866-944-GOLD. Gold is on the move, so don't miss out. For the first time ever on this station, U.S. government gold offered at cost for only $139 each. 1-866-944-GOLD or online at usmoneyreserve.com. Ask for a free 55-page gold buyer's book. Plus, get a free Walking Liberty half dollar just for reading this must-have book. Get your free gold book, your free half dollar, but most importantly, get your gold at cost for only $139 per coin. 1-866-944-GOLD. Have you checked your Google search results lately? Search results are usually the first impression that people form of you or your business. So make sure that they create a positive impression with ReputationDefender.com. What the Internet says about you can have a big impact on your life and your livelihood, even if it's not true. Fortunately, you can now control how you look online and in online search results with ReputationDefender.com. Call 800-831-0771 now. That's 800-831-0771 for your free reputation. Reputation analysis. If you have negative material from an ex-employee, upset patient, or former client, newspaper article, legal issue, social media, or other source showing up in your search results, you can combat it with ReputationDefender.com. Our dedicated experts in patented technology can help make your online search results look their best. Call 800-831-0771 to learn more. 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. Or visit ReputationDefender.com. Dangerous blood clot device alert. If you or a loved one had an IBC filter placed to prevent blood clots from traveling to your heart or lungs and suffered an injury, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. The FDA warns that IBC filters may cause serious complications, such as heart or lung damage, internal bleeding, and even death. These dangerous blood clot devices can break, and the metal fragments can travel to your heart or lungs, causing serious injuries. If you or a loved one suffered organ damage or other injuries from an IBC filter, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Act now. Time is limited to file a claim. For a free consultation and free information, call Injury Help Desk at 800-478-1507. 800-478-1507. 800-478-1507. This is an advertisement. Paid non-attorney spokesperson. InjuryHelpDesk.com is responsible for this advertisement. Principal Office, Las Vegas, Nevada. Welcome back to Wall Street Raw. Want to know more about Wall Street Raw and the Leibovitz VR newsletters? Go to WallStreetRawRadio.com. Welcome back, Sinclair No, financial commentator, KFNN 1510 Phoenix, and author of the blog, EatTheBankers.com. Sinclair, thanks for staying with us here on the Saturday morning and uh, finishing up. We have so many stories to cover. One of the big ones is um, the story on the gap earnings, and we know about the financial engineering going on on Wall Street where companies will buy back shares to improve artificially earnings. Uh, the big story that gets me go- going all the time, gets my goat, is you know low-balling estimates of earnings, uh, really low-balling them, and then suddenly, oh, big surprise, uh, they beat these low-balled estimates, and stocks go up, and it just, you know, it's just so frustrating that I guess the average person doesn't care as long as the stock's going up, I suppose, but it just shows the, uh, you know, the rigging on, on, a, on a level and 
basically just just the uh, you know poor sense of judgment these people have in terms of you know ethics. So what's going on here with the Gap story this week? Well. <laughs> First of all, you're absolutely right. When it comes to earnings, Wall Street analysts and uh, uh, corporate CEOs have been playing this game for some time where they come out with earnings estimates, the analysts do, and somehow or another, oh, typically in the range of 70 to 75% of the time, you see companies beat those earnings estimates. It's uh, it's as if they just lowered the bar for them and, and said, okay, can you step over it? And they go, yeah, we can. So you hear, wow, this company beat earnings estimates. There's a little pop in the price because they beat estimates. But keep in mind, we're also seeing that earnings for S&P 500 companies, for example, earnings are going to be down about 7.3% year over year. Revenues, 1.1% lower. Now, the energy sector is a big drag there, but earnings have been declining for four quarters. Revenue has been declining, and yet they still manage to beat right at 72% of the time. I mean, that's a lot of beats for a marketplace that's showing declining earnings and revenue. Amazing. Yeah. So that's the game, and that's been going on forever, and you and I have been talking about that for years and years. But more and more, we're seeing a gap come into play. And gap basically refers to generally accepted accounting principles, G-A-A-P. Uh, and you have gap numbers and non-gap numbers. And as you know, the difference between non-gap and gap earnings can be huge. And I think this can be another trap for investors uh, last year is just another example of this disparity between the real and the unreal earnings numbers. Um, the headline or pro forma earnings for companies in the S&P 500 in 2015 last year was 25% higher than the gap earnings. And that's the biggest disparity that we've seen since 2008. So basically they're just... They're just coming up with their own numbers now. It's as if there is just no reality at all behind any of this. Um, 67% of the companies in the Dow Industrial Average reported non-GAAP earnings per share, and on average, the difference between GAAP and non-GAAP earnings per share for those companies was about 30%. So you want to make your earnings look 30% higher? No problem. Go non-GAAP, and you've got it. So what does all this mean for somebody trying to make sense of of the market? We're told time and again, oh, you want to be a long-term investor, you've got to look at the earnings growth of a company, and you then you work the P.E. off of that and so forth and so on. This just goes back to your approach, uh, Mark, and that is follow the price action because all this other stuff is just so much garbage, and it is so manipulated that it is absolutely ridiculous. And we we don't have the um, financial press really challenging this. I write about this in my letter about what's going on. They they don't act in the capacity of the fourth estate like we're doing on this show, where they really challenge that. They just uh, talk about it, but you don't hear them on CNBC or any of the networks, you know, saying what we're saying. And, it, and perhaps if some pressure was put on, some reality uh, would set in here, and the people, you know, would realize that <clears throat> this is not something we should be talking about or doing. We need to change the way we report things and present it in reality. It's just amazing. You would think that a company should be able to report their earnings in an accurate and relatively easy to follow manner, Mm -hmm. uh, something that has some standardization, and yet they've just come up with a completely different set of books. It's like we have one set of books over here, and then for the investing public, well, we've got the non-GAAP, and uh, we'll, we'll try and feed that to them, and so far people are people are buying it. Meanwhile, some of the smartest people out there, supposedly the hedge funds, have been underperforming in this market, as you know. So despite the fact that we have this rigging going on on the uh, company side, the funds can't seem to uh, to make money. It's amazing. Yeah, well, it, not a surprise. There was the Sohn conference going on in New York, and uh, the hedge funds were rolling out the dog and pony shows, trying to act like they really knew what was going on, when in fact they've been underperforming the S&P uh, 500 index for the past year or so. Now they're charging two and twenty to do it, 
whereas an S&P ETF is going to be pretty cheap. So what are you getting for this? Well, apparently not much. And just this past week, we saw MetLife and AIG saying they were going to get out of their hedge fund portfolios. It's just too expensive. The performance is bad. But, you know, a couple of weeks back, we saw the New York City Employment Retirement System, largest pension fund in New York City, announcing they would liquidate their hedge fund portfolio. Big fees, bad performance. What's the point in doing that? Um, this is a, this is a tough time for the for the hedge funds right now, and yeah, you know, they're just not getting it done. I think a lot of people thought that they were a lot smarter than they really are. We've been seeing ads on TV. I forget the name of the company, and I probably should mention it, where they say if they don't perform, if they lose money over two consecutive quarters, they're going to refund the management fees. First time we've seen that, so the realization has come that uh, they are fallible. Well, the problem, though, with hedge funds is if if they underperform, they don't refund the management fee. Uh, Instead, you might find yourself a little bit locked into a position, not so easy to liquidate a position. Sinclair, thank you for joining us again. We're talking to Sinclair No, financial commentator, 1510 Phoenix, and author of the great blog, eatthebankers.com. We'll have you back next week, and uh, thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Mark. Thank you again, Sinclair. And uh, as I mentioned on Friday, um, with the recent rally, uh, you know, we've had a nice set off, setback as well, and it's hard to believe, unless you're watching the market as carefully as we have, but we had a 500-point decline in the Dow here just in the last couple of weeks from the 18,160 area down to 17,600. So uh, about 55, 60 points in the S&P. So perhaps a little bounce we saw on Friday and a little bounce maybe we'll see going forward is just a little pause that refreshes. But, you know, I am in the camp that um, we are going lower and uh, perhaps significantly, and I also believe we've entered a recession. So we have, you know, rigged markets out there, and the Fed could do anything, but they do, do choose to raise rates in June, much as we saw in December. It could help precipitate more of a decline if they don't. I think the economic numbers are going to prevail here as we still have recession uh, worldwide. So uh, numbers are saying be careful, and even if you don't believe that scenario, so may go away. Stay tuned. We'll be back with uh, my good friend Don Below after the break. You're listening to Wall Street Raw with Mark Leibovitz. Go to WallStreetRawRadio.com for information on Mark's newsletters and products. Stay tuned. Mark will be right back. High-performance investors and traders use superior financial tools to achieve superior returns. You have that tool with Mark Leibovitz, nationally renowned top market timer, legendary television Wall Street Week elf, and nightly business report market monitor, who shares with you his unique market tools and commentary at WallStreetRaw.com. Here, Mark provides you with his latest ideas on how to help build and protect your wealth, help you avoid the next big market tsunami, and also stay healthy to enjoy your wealth. Mark has a special free gift for listeners of his Wall Street Raw radio show. Go to WallStreetRaw.com and sign up for his free Vice News Raw report. You will receive it weekly, and it is totally free. No credit card information is required, and no one will call. Sign up today for your free Vice News Raw report at WallStreetRaw.com. That's WallStreetRaw.com for your free weekly report from Mark Leibovitz and WallStreetRaw.com. Dangerous blood clot device alert. If you or a loved one had an IBC filter placed to prevent blood clots from traveling to your heart or lungs and suffered an injury, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. The FDA warns that IBC filters may cause serious complications, such as heart or lung damage, internal bleeding, and even death. These dangerous blood clot devices can break, and the metal fragments can travel to your heart or lungs, causing serious injuries. If you or a loved 
loved one suffered organ damage or other injuries from an IBC filter, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Act now. Time is limited to file a claim. For a free consultation and free information, call Injury Help Desk at 800-478-1507. 800-478-1507. 800-478-1507. This is an advertisement. Paid non-attorney spokesperson. InjuryHelpDesk.com is responsible for this advertisement. Principal Office, Las Vegas, Nevada. A good stove is at the top of the list for any serious survivalist. That's why you have to see the full range at Emberlit.com. Simple, elegant, but extraordinarily efficient. Available in titanium or stainless steel, the Emberlit line of stoves are ultralight, pack flat, and work great. Fueled only by sticks and debris. From emergency situations to long-term survival, Emberlit stoves are up to the task. Emberlit, the most convenient, easy-to-carry wood stoves on the planet. See them all at Emberlit.com. When I was 15 and a half years of age, I had two large mercury fillings put into my teeth. I got very sick that day, and over time, the mercury exposure damaged my body. My sunny disposition turned to depression and low energy. Many years later, I understood what had happened, and in 1991, I replaced these mercury fillings with white composite. In 1997, I learned that the homeopathic mercury detox I did years earlier did not remove the mercury from my body. I began an effective means of removing mercury from my body. My digestion and elimination returned to normal, and I began to have my life back. From 1999 to 2005, I tested the level of mercury in my body, and each test showed my mercury burden was high. After five years on One World Way, I recently did another mercury test. The results showed my body is free of mercury and virtually all toxic metals. One World Way is very powerful for detoxification support. It has helped many, and it may help you. Call 888-988-3325 or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorld, W-H-E-Y.com. This is Dan Pillard. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Responsibility begins and ends with our partners and our shareholders, and that's it. There is no freedom without the law. Get it? Got it? Good. Welcome back to Wall Street Law and the final segment with Mark Leibovitz. Now, here's the elf himself. Welcoming a very special guest and good friend uh, this Saturday morning, Don Bielo from uh, EquityClock.com. Um, Don's the past president of the Canadian Technical Analysis Society, CSTA. He's a chartered market technician. Uh, he's got only 46 years of experience in the investment industry. He's an advisor to the Horizon Seasonal Rotation ETF Fund, and he's an author of a daily letter since 2003 to on equity markets available free on the internet and uh, the official website is timingthemarkets.ca timingthemarkets.ca though I retrieve it at equityclock.com which I encourage all of you to uh, check in on it's fabulous stuff and we're going to learn more about it here in just uh, just a moment Don thanks for being with us glad to be there Mark so uh, we had talked prior, and uh, you know we both talk about seasonality a little bit in the market and timing. Though you're the real uh, expert in the area, and the big subject that I write about every year is the sell May and go away phenomenon. And um, I believe you think it's more of a myth than uh, reality. So I want to get your opinion on that, and that's a you know big topic among the traders this time of year. Yes, Mark. It, it actually is a, is a myth. Um, um, some angle it implies that the markets will go lower from uh, beginning of May until the end of October. In fact, the, I guess the official dates that a lot of analysts talk about is uh, sell on May the 5th and uh, buy on October 28th. Turns out uh, it, it's the right strategy, but the wrong month. Uh, turns out that the... Uh, the markets do underperform from May to, to October of each year, but uh, 
the key is that there's other factors that are involved which uh, can have an impact. If you actually look at the data over the last uh, 20 years, the dates have actually shifted slightly. Uh, the preferred date for the S&P 500 now is around uh, selling around the middle of June and then buying around the middle of October. So we do get some early uh, peaks uh, in previous years just before the flash crash in 2010. I believe the market topped out in April and sold off. So th there are some aberrations to this, no question about it, right? Yeah, one of the things to look at is, is the, the frequency of this trade from May the 5th to October 28th. It turns out uh, during the last uh, 65 years, it's, uh, you've seen the S&P 500 actually go up 62% of the time. So, again, it's the frequency to suggest that using May to October is probably the wrong dates. Probably should use the middle of June to the middle of October. So we tend to remember the big events, They're the ones that, you know, create the, the the biggest splash in the news. And, and like you're saying, if you look at the statistics, really it's it's not as profound as, as we remember it. Well, yeah, the, the important thing is to... Uh, Say, okay, you've got these dates, and that seasonality helps you in that direction. But the next thing to ask yourself is why does the seasonality happen from, say, middle of January or June to the middle of October? And the reason is that every year uh, during at least the last 10 years, there's been a significant unexpected event that occurs that causes a spike in volatility. And you can identify that spike by just looking at the VIX. So the VIX uh, index, uh, we're waiting for that big spike then. It's been hanging down pretty low here in recent weeks, hasn't it? Yes, and there's good reason to believe that that will probably continue for a few more weeks. But usually there's something unusual. Uh, I'm going to give you some examples. Uh, last summer it was uh, China that blew up. Uh, the previous summer it was the Ebola and the Ukraine that blew up. The year before that was uh, when Greece blew up. And the previous year that was, uh, was Europe blew up. All these things happen between uh, the middle of June and the uh, middle of October. I guess the granddaddy of them all was actually in 2008 when we had literally the financial world blew up, uh, but also reached a fairly important low right around the end of October. For those who really uh, don't pay attention to seasonality and cycles, uh, they're making a big mistake just based on what you said alone. Anyone would, would not want to ignore <laughs> this coming time frame, that's for sure. Uh, you know, speaking of time frames, we, we want to talk a little bit about the presidential election year. Of course, that's a big story now with Donald Trump in the news and Hillary and what's going to happen there. So talk a little bit about what the U.S. equity markets tend to do during the presidential election year. I know you do a lot of work here. It's fascinating because this idea on the seasonality on, in the markets uh, fits very nicely with the presidential cycle. Historically, what happens is the equity markets, uh, U.S. markets, move lower from uh, beginning of April to around the end of May, and then uh, the candidates make nice uh, try to consolidate their, their parties between the beginning of May right through until early September. Markets tend to go higher. And then after that, the markets come under significant downside pressure, which could be the event that causes the markets to go lower this year. That's from right around the beginning of September right through until the end of October. We generally have a negative September-October period anyway. Is, is that true based on your cycle analysis? Exactly. But this year, uh, there's another reason why it's likely to be fairly important, and that is the, they changed the, tax, the, uh, the, the laws for contributing to presidential elections uh, uh, by the Supreme Court, I guess, about four years ago. Now, super PACs can in, invest as much money as they want into uh, uh, favoring one candidate or the other. Now, the reason that's important is because right around the beginning of September, right through until just before election um, in early November, we often will see the two final candidates coming out and really bashing each other. Now, this year they're going to bash each other even more so because of these super PACs, which are basically uh, have un unending funding. So look for a period of time where the candidates do really come out at each other, and that causes market uncertainty. That causes the markets to move lower right through from the beginning of September right through until just before election date. And then the good news, once you get past the election, you, when you finally know who the president's going to be, the markets historically have moved higher from just after election day right through until the end of the year. 
Great roadmap for us, Don. I really appreciate that. We're talking to Don Villalo, equityclock.com or timingthemarkets.ca. Uh, those would be the best two places for uh, people to reach you, correct? Yes, um, both are, are excellent sites. They both receive about 1.5 million hits per month. Fantastic. Yeah, Don Villalo, great for ha- having you on our show. And uh, as you probably know, I quote you quite often in my newsletter and use your work repeatedly because it's just fantastic stuff. Don Villalo from timingthemarkets.ca, and hope to have you back really soon, Don. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Mark. Thank you again, Don. Yeah, great having you. And, uh, again, you can't de-emphasize the importance of cyclical work by annual forecast model, which I put together since 1987, and which actually, you know, called the crash in 87 and just about uh, oh, every significant decline we've had since. In fact, in my book, The Trader's Book of Volume, I talk about I've never been caught in a market crash. A lot has to do with the cyclical analysis that Don has talked about and also our proprietary volume analysis. So, you know, you really got to pay attention to all the events out there. You just can't only look at balance sheets or listen to what the uh, financial uh, networks are telling you or what you read in the papers. You have to really study and see what the, the bigger picture is. And again, you have repetitive events in the market on a cyclical basis. And uh, of course, you've got to watch the volume activity. So uh, what can I tell you here uh, on this Saturday morning? We, we have broken borders. We know that. And we have Donald Trump talking about that. Uh, we have a broken financial press, which uh, doesn't really uh, challenge uh, you know, the numbers and uh, things that are coming out, both the White House and uh, Wall Street. Um, uh, we have uh, former uh, presidential candidates like Donald Cruz uh, talking about um, uh, abolishing the uh, IRS, Ted Cruz, I'm sorry, abolishing the uh, IRS. I think they should probably abolish the IRS and the Federal Reserve. We talked about this. Uh, we got to remember borders, language, and culture, both from our good friend uh, Michael Savage and also Teddy Roosevelt, as I quoted earlier in the show. And uh, we really have to try to make uh, Wall Street great again. That's really the uh, closing thought I would have for you this week. We really have to make Wall Street great again, and we can do it by questioning Wall Street and by you know doing our homework here a little bit and studying both the cyclical and technical pictures. And we're going to do our best here to warn you about further declines in the market as I see them coming. Meanwhile, as I say every week this time, uh, my good friend uh, Ed Hart from the old uh, Financial Network said to us every week, we will know in the fullness of time. Stay tuned, and thank you for joining us here on Wall Street Raw. We'll We'll speak to you next week. Thank you for listening to Wall Street Raw with nationally recognized market timer and previous Wall Street Week out, Mark Leibovitz. If you missed any of today's show or to get in touch with Mark, please go to WallStreetRawRadio.com. Any stocks or investment discussed on Wall Street Raw are not in any way a recommendation or solicitation to buy, sell, or hold. We first recommend you seek out a licensed financial professional for advice. Go to WallStreetRawRadio.com for more information on Mark's newsletters and products. High-performance investors and traders use superior financial tools to achieve superior returns. You have that tool with Mark Leibovit, nationally renowned top market timer, legendary television Wall Street Week elf, and nightly business report market monitor, who shares with you his unique market tools and commentary at WallStreetRaw.com. At WallStreetRaw.com, Mark provides you with his latest ideas on how to help build and protect your wealth, help you avoid the next big market crash, and also stay healthy to enjoy your wealth. Mark has a special free gift for listeners of the Wall Street Raw radio show. Go to WallStreetRaw.com and sign up for his free weekly Vice News Raw report. While there, go ahead and sign up for his free Gold News Raw report. You will receive both weekly, and both are totally free. No credit card information is required. Sign up today for your free Vice News Raw and Gold News Raw reports at WallStreetRaw.com. That's WallStreetRaw.com. Are you worried about your mom or dad living alone in their house? Hi, I'm Joan London. Listen, I know how difficult it is to find senior care for someone you love. That's why I recommend a free service called A Place for Mom. They are the nation's largest senior living referral service. Call A Place for Mom today. To receive free information on senior living communities in your area, call A Place for Mom at 1-800-704-6182. 
a place where mom offers free one-on-one advice from local advisors and a personalized list of senior living communities you can visit. If you have questions about senior care for your mom or dad, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. Call a place for mom in the next 10 minutes to get your free ebook on financing senior care as well as free information on senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-704-6182. That's 1-800-704-6182. 